Hi there, and welcome to The Works. I'm Ben Pelletier. And I'm Ben Che. In this week's show, we look at the best of the best, an exhibition by the International Auction House Christie's that includes work by Chu Tae Chun, Liu Kuo Xiong, Xu Bei Hong, and contemporary Chinese artist Zheng Fangji to celebrate the opening of its first Asia-based gallery. Painter Jessica Chen takes us on a trip to a world in miniature in her exhibition, I Am, in a Microcosm World. And local pianist KJ is in our studio to talk about his participation in the Music Lab Education Studio. But before all that, William Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream is a romantic comedy that includes a troupe of actors, fairies, and a man who is briefly afflicted with the head of a donkey. To bring its magical world to life, the Bristol Old Vic Theatre Company has teamed up with the Handspring Puppet Company, who also brought Warhorse alive on stage. I'm Miltos Yorolamo, and I play Bottom. I also play Aegeus at the beginning and towards the end. I play her dad. And I will roar as gently as any sucking dog. <laughs> but yeah, I play, I play Bottom, and... Uh, it's, I mean, you know, he's an archetypal, you know, one of the classic Shakespearean clowns. I'm Akia Henry, and I play Hermia, who is one of the four lovers who uh, gets to enter the forest and be manipulated in quite an exciting, crazy way. Bosoms and one truth. Nay, good Lysander. Uh, for my sake, my dear, lie further off yet. Do not lie so near. Uh, I'm David Ricardo Pierce, and I play Theseus and Oberon. So I play all of the uh, the kings, um, king of the mortals and the king <laughs> of the fairies. <laughs> yes, he, he's the yeah. man. Carry, rat, want. And not I, thy lord. Then I must be thy lady. William Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream is the most popular of his comedies and a particular favourite with younger viewers. It involves the wedding of the Duke of Athens, Theseus, to Hippolyta, Queen of the Amazons. The soul of love. Four young lovers who enter a forest, a troupe of actors to rehearse and then perform a tragedy so badly it becomes a comedy and a quarrel between the king and queen of the fairies. For the recent Bristol Old Vic production, artistic director Tom Morris decided to bring these interacting worlds to life with the help of puppetry. For that, he turned to the South African Handspring Puppet Company, which had previously helped bring Michael Morpurgo's 1982 children's novel, War Horse, to the stage. And loosed his love shaft, smart. You know, you can see our set, it's, it's kind of just made of wood, and our puppets are made of wood, you know, and everything is kind of stems from Tom Morris's idea that they have been almost Con the, the fairy world has been conjured into life by, by, by these images of Oberon and Titania being created so that they can bless the wedding of Theseus and Hippolytus. So that was always a starting point, and so it, it never felt like gratuitous, yeah. just for the sake of having puppets. It was kind of elemental. Our play is quite elemental. And ere I take this charm from off her sight, as I can take it with another herb, I'll make her render up her page to me. The mask, um, which is Oberon's head here, is there's no mechanics at all. It's just an a unmoving mask. So to make him live, you have to give your attention to him and then uh, see through his eyes. So if he looks at you, he looks at you through his eyes rather than through my eyes. If he looks away, again, uh, if he's, he can get very sort of, um, very angry or <laughs> very inquisitive or, or even sort of gentle, sort of depending on how you, you manipulate him. And the hand is, is a more complex puppet, which is operated by these levers with my fingers. Um, so the hand can, the hand can open um, if, you press, if you press them down. The hand can go into a point, 
Oberon has lots of long monologues, um, sometimes very descriptive and very uh, beautifully told. And playing that through puppet is a is a massive challenge and forces you as an actor to make different choices to as uh, and as a, if you're playing it as a human. Um, and that's really that's really interesting actually. And that's I think there's something about about using Shakespeare's language, but playing it through what's essentially a block of wood. Because they're not very complicated puppets. I mean, they're very basic. I mean, you'll see that they're pretty simple, like Miltos says, elemental puppets. You do kind of take for granted, just in terms of the technicalities of puppetry, what you have to go through, like puppeteers, it takes them like six, seven years to master the craft. And we had six weeks. What's really great is like with the planks of wood where we're exploring, you know, connecting with other characters in the story because in A Midsummer Night's Dream, whenever I see it, it always feels like I'm watching three different plays. And I feel like with our puppetry within our play, our version of A Midsummer Night's Dream, it feels like the planks of words and different elements of the puppetry are allowing all of the different stories to be connected. is all about transformation and the fact that a, a, the, the, the set comes to life, life, that the fairies are not just puppets but sometimes wood. The things in front of your eyes keep changing and what you're seeing keeps changing is very much part of, of the style of our show and also, I think, the play. Over the past two weeks, the Christie's Auction House has been presenting the best of the best in a new gallery space on its Hong Kong premises, the James Christie Room. The exhibition closes Saturday. Right now, we're bringing you a sample. Given that our sales last year in Hong Kong grew by some 30%, which are some of the strongest results in the world, there is this great appetite which we are endeavouring to meet. That we really, really wanted to have a permanent presence here, which will enable us to showcase some of the greatest art from around the world. We want to have a space where we can convene people showcase great sales, showcase private sales, but also have the opportunity of just bringing people together so we can have art forums and discussions and it's a place for people to meet, get to know Christie's, get to know each other, get to know the art. by Monet. We have works by Warhol. We have great Chinese works of art. We have some wonderful jewelry. We also have contemporary art from Asia, Japanese contemporary art, Chinese contemporary art, Southeast Asian contemporary art. So it's all about showcasing the very best of what we were able to offer. And in addition, we have not only auction highlights, but also private sales, works for private sale, and works which are here 
just because we think they're wonderful works of art. Welcome back. Jessica Zheng was born and raised in Hong Kong, but received a Master of Fine Arts degree from the New York Studio School of Drawing, Painting and Sculpture. She lived in New York from 2005 to 2010 and held several exhibitions there, some in the Soho and Chelsea Art District. Back in Hong Kong, she says she doesn't just want her oil paintings to present an external reality. She also wants to present an internal spiritual meaning. Her latest exhibition, I Am in a Microcosmic World, is on show at the Pub Art Gallery until 4th of April. Jessica Jung says she was inspired by the paintings of German-born abstract expressionist Hans Hoffmann before she even knew who he was. Hoffmann, who moved to America in his 50s, believed that abstract art is a way to express important realities. Among the students that Hoffmann taught was Vita Peterson. For Jessica, encountering Peterson in the United States seemed to be some kind of fate. The former student of Hoffmann became her mentor and a friend. 我是覺得這個經驗是很奇特的 Jessica returned to Hong Kong after getting her master degree of fine arts in New York. At first, she found it hard to adjust focusing on smaller scale paintings. What 但是當你拿走那些物件的時候 Vita Peterson died in 2011. She had painted until the end. 
When, a year before her death, an eye condition made it impossible for her to work in colour, she switched to black and white. Jessica was saddened by her passing, but is determined to continue Peterson's exploration of the push and pull, the yin and yang of colour, form and space. I don't want to eat food because I want to eat food to eat food. 諗住咁，喂個 market 要咁咁咁啊！誒，你去迎合個 market 畫嗰啲嘢啦。我唔想，因為我始終係希望有一個自己喺度，同埋有一個自己嘅理念喺度，同埋要真係 make sure 自己係真係好中意、好中意，先至可以有呢一份堅持喺度咯。咁所以我諗，我我暫時我都會堅持落去。Fans of local classical musicians won't need much of an introduction to local pianist Wang Kajeng, also known as KJ. He's been playing the piano since he was seven, and music has clearly meant a lot to him all through his youth. Today, he's in our studio to tell us about a new project that he hopes will encourage a new younger generation to develop that same enthusiasm. Well, KJ, it's a great pleasure to have you back in our studios. Um, it's been about three years since you were last on? That's right. Uh, what have you been up to in the meantime? Well, I finished my undergraduate studies at Indiana University. And, uh, and what was your focus of those studies? Piano? Piano performance. Right. And so now you're back in Hong Kong. Right. And uh, what are you setting up for yourself here? Well, uh, we set, we've set up this arts organization called Music Lab. And we just started a music education studio as well. We mainly do productions that uh, that will bring music to different communities in Hong Kong. And also, we try to break the format of classical music concert while being uh, truthful to our to our to our art. And the educational component, how does that uh, dovetail into the performance aspect? It was after a few productions I realized that in the long term, in the long term I mean like perhaps in 20 or 30 years, the real audience of classical music must be nurtured. And I personally feel the responsibility to, to reach out to those communities. So we set up uh, an education studio where we try to bring music uh, from an educational front. And in terms of Music Lab, where would you like to see Music Lab in say 10 years time? Wow, I wish Music Lab to develop to develop a sustainable orchestra, to have sustainable uh, business model that we can keep doing productions in different corners in Hong Kong and not just in the main venues. And perhaps I would like Music Lab to be recognized as a place where any musicians can join. Now you've mentioned sharing. How about sharing a bit of music with us and the works audience here in the studio? What can you play for us? For sure. Um, since I would say that I'm still dreaming, then I would, I would like to play Dreaming from Schumann's Opus 15, Scenes from Childhood. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. <laughs> 